Leave it 5 one turn right heading 180. turn right 245, report localised established 27. Rolls-Royce and the Boeing 787 have been one of, you could argue, the worst pairings we've seen for some time. It's been a combination that was destined to succeed originally, but has since its introduction also seen customers constantly affected in the worst way possible with mass groundings and hundreds of inspections that simply came one after the other. In what has really been a quite few months though for the Trent 1000, we have seen issues in the past few days. Rolls-Royce said they were now in the process of swapping more than 30 30 engines on the Boeing 787s following a brand new concern. This concern has been identified and could see the aircraft suffer a huge power surge. Should this occur, the surge would lead to an in-flight shutdown, obviously quite the concern. If you've been here with the channel for a few years, you may be aware of the other Trent 1000 issues, but I know there are a lot of you that are new to the channel. So if not, Rolls-Royce have been front and centre for the past few years with blade durability issues on their Package B and Package C engines on the 787 series. It's all the likes of Norwegian, Air New Zealand and also Virgin Atlantic to name a few have to ground their jets and draft in replacements. Air New Zealand notably went out and got the Highfly A340, while Norwegian got in the Highfly A380 and operated it on a service from Gatwick to New York for a short period of time, although that encountered its own issues that I covered in a video, I believe all the way back in 2018, just to show you how long ago this was. The issue with the potential power surge is being said to have impacted the 7878 variant in particular rather than all three existing variants. Rolls-Royce has said that the issue can impact those Trent 1000s on the 7878s which have already reached a high number of operating hours slash flights. So, what engines can be paired and what engines can't be paired? Let me try and explain for you all. Rolls-Royce has said that if a Trent 1000 has over 24,000 hours flown, it cannot be paired with another Trent 1000 on the 787 with also 24,000 hours flown. It needs to be paired with an engine that has 17,000 hours or fewer flown. When comparing the cycles, that's 8,000 cycles for the 24,000 hours and 5,500 cycles for the 17 hours. The EASA, or European Union Aviation Safety Agency, were the ones who issued the specific airworthiness directive last Friday. Despite this new concern, Rolls-Royce has been relatively confident for some time now that the worst of the issues regarding the Trent 1000s were indeed behind them, and that they could look to the future with powering other aircraft that may come out. With aircraft manufacturers constantly looking at new aircraft, like Boeing and their NMA, which we all know has been sent back to the drawing board, Rolls-Royce has always been front and centre for these discussions, eagerly wanting to power the next jet, the next hit in the aviation industry. The hope really was that these Trent issues wouldn't drag on and prevent them from being selected for future projects. While these blade durability problems and now deep pairing surge problems have been present for some time, Rolls-Royce has said that they expect it to cost them £550 million for the 2020 calendar year. This £550 million will help them deal with the issues that are still present. However, it is worth mentioning that while this is a calculated guesstimate, if you will, the numbers can also eventually be higher than what was originally expected, given potentially new issues or maybe more money being required to fix an existing issue. We've seen it before on multiple occasions, whether it be with airlines releasing their yearly numbers or something else. Nick Cunningham, though, is an analyst at the agency Partners in London, and he did comment on the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 program, specifically focusing on this new surge issue, and I think it's worth mentioning what he said. The Trent 1000 program has been like a whack-a-mole for Rolls-Royce, adding they address one problem and another one crops up. The latest AD, Airworthiness Directive from the EASA, suggests that the risk for the Trent 1000 are more on the downside than on the upside. They may have to provision for the higher costs when they report the earnings, pretty much touching on what I just mentioned before. Anyway, now it's time to ask you, like always, what do you make of the new issue regarding the Trent 1000s? Do you believe that it's going to be a very simple de-pairing fix, or would you be more generally concerned that this sort of thing has popped up? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I'll see you all next time.